So today was the men's Olympic road race. Started pretty early in Europe, so only caught the last couple hours, but apparently didn't miss too much on Fuji. But the key thing was Richard Gachigarapaz won the Olympic Games uh, road race, which is huge. I mean, the boy has obviously done well this year, um, having come finished third at the Tour. Couldn't win a stage. Obviously, last year finished second in the Welter. Um, and the year before that, won the Giro. So, you know, very consistent rider. But you wouldn't say he's spectacular in the one days. He rode well in Flesh Ballon, etc. Um, and Liège. But he wasn't, like, unbelievable big favourite. However, in reality, he's actually pretty well suited to it. He's punchy uh, and a good climber. So why not? But anyway, we're going to go through the power data today of Brandon McNulty, who was in the break with Car uh, Carapaz um, for a significant amount of time. So the whole ride, well, we went through it yesterday, 230k, 5,000 meters of climbing almost, tough day out, 315 normalized, so if the threshold is correct, which I think it probably isn't, um, it'll be like 75%, it's probably a little bit less, um, I believe his weight is correct, but we'll see. So anyway, you can see the first part is like, they literally like soft tap, 230 normalized for these boys is like zero. Uh, even the first climb, which was basically the Yamabushi climb, um, it also had other names like the Doshi climb. Anyway. Again, not too hard, 324 um, watts average normalized, a little bit higher, so like 5 watts per kilo for like 20 minutes, so pretty like tempo basically for these boys. Uh, and then going into the uh, into Fuji, which I guess was the main thing of the day, it wasn't easy at the bottom, like you can see here, there was like a decent fight for position, but on the actual final climb, on the, sorry, the second to last main climb anyway, uh, it was done at a normalized power of 370, so like maybe 5.3, 5.4 was a little bit higher than what the average is. Um, and as always on these climbs, when they're like fast, so 25k an hour, there's quite a lot of surging just to stay on the wheels, but nothing crazy. But the thing is, so you might be saying so far, okay, yeah, well, you know, it's not like a crazy hard race at the moment, but the humidity and heat is just crazy. And I think that wiped out a lot of people today. Like even Pagaccio, when he went, he wasn't like earth uh, shatteringly good, but we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that now. So... This was the main climb. I think it's always interesting with the with the climb that is actually to look at just the bits before it because often the bottom half is really hard. So you look here, 400 normalized for 20 minutes, but this is obviously including some of the climb. But if you look at like just this part here, it's really hard. Like 400 normalized for six minutes in getting into the bottom of the climb. Um, that's where often people don't realize like, okay, yeah, you can do your six and a half watts per kilo after two and a half thousand kilojoules, but can you do it after like 400 watt surges, 500 watt surges? Anyway, we'll get onto the climb here. I and mean, it was ridden really aggressively at the beginning. It was done at, what, 500 watts for the first minute and a half. I think 470 for the first three minutes is what I got, more or less. Like, this is like over seven watts per kilo for two minutes at the bottom of the climb. So that leaves you in a pretty rough state, like gasping for air. Because, I mean, seven watts per kilo is above its threshold, obviously. Um, probably not as much as it would be if it was you and I, but still very hard. Um, if we look at the average power 407 but there's a big gap here and normalized 418 so the average is probably close to that so you know 6 6.1 watts per kilo depending exactly on his weight but pretty pretty impressive um numbers when you realize it's come at 200 kilometers in on a really hot day and i don't think i can uh, like stress that like people were pretty cooked um like roglic was cooked but gacha couldn't even go but you see here like um this was really where brandon McNulty went and went across to Pagaccio, this 11 minutes was obviously the hardest, 430 normalized, um, because Pagaccio went and then McNulty bridged across, and then so did Mike Woods, and then they sort of messed around a little bit at the top uh, after this downhill, there was sort of a, still a climb, and people were getting on here like Van Aert and Kwiatkowski and Carapaz, they didn't follow immediately, they, they bridged on across, and then there was one more climb here, which uh, was basically, you know, like hard, but not really, it's, it's pretty false flat sorry this is the false flat part here it's like 408 watts 30k an hour but it was with 25 kilometers to go um so just a little bit up here uh which was basically where the boy decided to attack he hit 1100 watts we'll find the actual part just here he hit 1100 watts here attacking getting across and then putting in a big shift here um with carapaz basically to get away and on the descent like it was hard but it wasn't too bad they put got a big gap early on just because no one wants to chase. Obviously, with Wout Van Aert and a group behind, like, you're not going to chase, are you? You're just going to sit on and wait for him to do the work. And then when they got to the bottom, to be fair, I think uh, he could tell Carapaz that um, Carthy was a bit 
a bit tired because he attacked him almost straight away um, on once they got to the finishing circuit, which was only on like the last um, five kilometers or so. Um, so he did pretty well, to be honest, but it was around this point here where he got dropped just on this small little rise here. He was doing like 400, 500 watts, but Carapaz said cheerio boy and solo to the line. Obviously, it'd be interesting to see if Carapaz does upload his power data, but I thought I'd rather crack out a video now where you can get almost all the data and wait for Carapaz, which may or may not come. Obviously, in the end, he was probably just doing like <clears throat> maybe 380, 370 watts for the last 5K. Um, and like, obviously, you have to be strong to, to solo away, but realistically, like, it wasn't that much of a concerted chase once they got to the circuit. Before, it was actually, they got it down to 14 seconds, but anyway. They didn't catch them in the end. And that's often how these races happen. And it's happened to Sagan before. If they know, like the people you're with, that you're the best sprinter, you have to do all the work. And the thing with Wout, though, is he does genuinely just love doing work. So he'll be on the front. And he did a lot of work. I don't think he could have asked him for much more work. I just think if you're like David Gaudu, like you're like, why am I going to work? I'm just going to smoke to 52 kilos. And that's the issue. Same with Yates. Um, Shackman, okay, he did a bit of work. Iran did a fair amount. Pagatra as well, because I guess they're like, Iran's like got silver before. He's like, would be nice to get another medal. Pagacha, again, you know, it does have a good sprint. It was pretty close to being um, Wow Van Art. But then like Yates, like he did a bit of work, but like there's just no point because you catch him and then you're going to try and attack, like everyone's going to follow you. So it's just, it's so hard to ta play it right tactically, unless your name's Richie Carapaz. Um, and then he did play it tactically, went with the move, which just happened to be the one, McNulty and Carapaz. I think it was because. Maybe they were underestimated, in my opinion, probably, especially with Nolte. Um, and then once they're away, Carapaz was the strongest rider. And even in the sprint, I reckon Carapaz might have actually be, been in the sprint. He's a pretty punchy boy, but he didn't wait for a sprint. He went on the climb. Uh, well, it was like a silver roller in the finishing circuit. So anyway, just watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video about the Olympics. We've got the women's on, up tomorrow morning. I believe it's similar time. Starts about 4 or 5 a.m. UK time. We're supposed to finish probably a little bit earlier, maybe 9 a.m. in the UK. Um, obviously different parkour, but um, yeah, should be good. Excited to see if the Netherlands are going to do a one, two, three, four, or not. But anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.